In today's video, I'm going to show you the most difficult rule I ever created, but that at the same time can be played by a player of any skill level. Alright, this is the setup for today's drill. We have 7 balls on the table and each ball is half a diamond away from each other and they are set up on a straight line from the second diamond to the second diamond. By the way, if you want to get this layout as an image and with every rule there is, check out my Patreon page. Okay, let's talk about the rules. First of all, very important, you are only allowed to play the balls into either this or this corner pocket and you aren't allowed to collide into any other ball but the ball you're playing. Okay, and now to the adjustable rules. First of all, um, the order of balls. You could either play them in a random order, which is very easy, or to spice things a bit up, play them in order from 1 to 7. But you can combine this rule with another rule which deals with the cue ball's position. First of all, very easy, the cue ball is allowed to be everywhere in this area of the table. To make things a bit more difficult, the cue ball is only allowed to be in this area. Make it a bit more difficult, the cue ball is only allowed to be in this area. Make it more difficult, we use just this area for the cue ball after every shot. And the really hardcore version is the cue ball has to be always in the kitchen. And if you then combine this rule with uh, the rule that you have to play the balls in order from 1 to 7, then it's a really, really, really difficult rule, believe me. But guess what? We're trying to do this now. So uh, let's get to the um, actual execution of this rule. Okay guys, before we start, a quick hint, I adjusted the rules a little bit. This time I don't have to stay in the kitchen, I just have to pass the head string because it was just too difficult. I was trying this for 3 hours already and uh, all I could get was uh, onto the 5 ball. And I also wanted to reward myself if I'm able to draw the cue ball even more into the kitchen and out of the kitchen. That's why I adjusted the rules, but uh, you will see the attempt um, with the other rules as well after this attempt. And here you see the reason why this is a lot better. You can draw it even more, getting nicely and closer to the next ball and that way it's even easier to get position for the next ball. Here, however, I ended up with the wrong angle on the two ball and it's very close with the four ball because I have to hit really hard to draw it all the way into the kitchen. And you can see how close it was with the four ball. I almost hit it and of course, I'm adding some right spin to fasten the cue ball up a bit from the rail and uh, it was a real power draw but still um, I'm not in a very good position but the most important thing here is that I'm away from the rail. If I'm frozen to the rail it's basically over. Here I have to elevate as you can see but as long as I, as I can hit low on the cue ball everything's fine. And here again a real power draw shot again with spin that helps me to uh, get the right angle on the next ball and uh, of course to fasten the cue ball up. And this was uh, a very dangerous shot, a bit shorter and it's basically would have been over because then we have the same problem with the two ball. The cue ball wants to go towards the six ball, stays on the tangent line because you're hitting very hard. And you see here how little angle I had, it was almost straight and still the cue ball came again so close to the six ball. And uh, this was basically the perfect shot was going three rails with right spin and I'm actually was going into the line of the four ball. So even though you're going three rails, you're still going into the line. And uh, yeah, that's how it should be. And by the way, I created this drill for one of my students, my video students from Patreon. So if you say this is way too tough, don't forget, you can adjust the difficulty level and uh, he's playing, for example, without uh, any numerical order and uh, without a zone in the beginning. If he masters that, that, that part, then um, yeah, he's going to the next level, combines the different variations. So it's a really good role to, to work on many things like cue ball control, um, a straight stroke, for example, if you're playing this variation on your draw shot, on your cue action. So it's a really nice drill. And here, by the way, I got myself into real trouble. Still very close um, to the rail. But again, a very good draw shot with spin as well. And it fastens the cue ball up. Um, this was basically too much. I should, should have just stay, stayed somewhere in the kitchen where I'm not close to the rail. And then just make the seven ball with a natural follow ball 
two rails into the kitchen, but I actually tried um, to play the same shot, get away from the rail and uh, going towards the line of the seven again. And here the pressure was really high uh, because I tried the other version for three hours, this already for over an hour. And it was basically like the money ball in a 20k hill hill match. So as you can see, pressure was really high. I just didn't want to miss this ball. That's why I'm taking my time here. And you can even see on my stroke, it's a bit fast, not a smooth backswing, but I just tried to make the ball. And as you can see what happens now, cue ball comes awfully close to the corner pocket, but it didn't scratch. All right, this is now the attempt where I have to stay in the kitchen. So uh, it's really, really difficult here to always get the right angle on the next pause. And here, for example, on the two ball, I already messed up, but um, I will be able to recover. But that's not the angle one you want to have. And the problem is the more balls you make and you have to stay in the kitchen, the closer you must be to the rails because as I mentioned before, you don't want to have the angle, for example, here or on the four, where you're going towards the next ball. From the four, you don't want to have the angle where you're going towards the six ball. And this is really difficult. I g uh, did get, I think, three times to the five ball. By the way, this is a horrible shot here, where I just can uh, follow the ball. But I recovered well. But as you see here, now it's basically over. I have no chance. Um, to make that five ball directly without hitting the seven ball. That's why I'm trying to play a two rail bank shot because only the two corner pockets are allowed. So I want to hit as close as possible to the upper left corner pocket and make the two rail bank shot. And unfortunately I missed, but now let's get it to the outro. All right, a very difficult drill, but we got through. Let me know in the comments which difficulty level you can master in this drill. And by the way, if you were wondering what those numbers and the circles on the table were, those were actually projections that come from my ICA training system. I used the system to mark my balls without putting anything on the glove and for much more uh, cool stuff, but this is a topic for a future video. Okay, we will see on 1st of December with the video series video series 24 shots you must know and by the way the quality will be higher than this video because i actually hired a cameraman for this and it looks really amazing just have a look here or either here uh, just look how beautiful this looks so um, i really can't wait to show it to you but until then uh, a huge thank you goes out to my sponsors of course to everyone who's supporting me don't forget to like comment share subscribe and so on you know the drill and uh, that's it for today Thanks for watching guys and as always, see you on 1st of December. Take care.